grateful too. Joining me here in studio is musician, actor, and author, Daryl Davis. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, what a pleasure. You know, you're amazing and fascinating but some would say a little crazy <laughs> to be <laughs> trying to convince, you know, as an African-American man, trying to convince members of the Ku Klux Klan to take off their robes, lay down their robes, and denounce the organization that they belong to. Why are you doing this? Well, you know, the Klan has been around here mm -hmm. since 1865. Right. Not 1965, 1865. And where are we now? just a few days from 2020, mm -hmm. and it's still here? Why? Uh, I see our society as a very divided society, and I know that our society can only become one of two things. One, it can become that which we sit back and allow it to become, or it can become that which we stand up and make it. Right. So we have to ask ourselves the question, do I want to sit back and see what my society becomes? Or do I want to stand up and make it become what I want to see? And I've chosen the latter. But certainly the Klan isn't as prolific as it was in the 1800s. I mean, we're talking about 2019. I mean, are you saying that there's still a real network of, of Klansmen out there that need to be convinced otherwise? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's not as, as uh, large as it was mm -hmm. back, in the, back in its heyday. However, uh, uh, you know, we, we can use the Klan just a, as a generic, mm -hmm. right? White supremacy. You know, the Klan has spawned many other groups, uh, neo-Nazi groups, right, the alt-right, mm -hmm. et cetera, white power skinheads, on and on. Mm -hmm. It all started with the Klan. They were the original uh, gang, if you will, uh, that was formed in 1865. So, yes, uh, white supremacy is, is a problem out here. We take a look at, uh, at Dylan Roof mm -hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina, Robert Bowers in Pittsburgh at the synagogue, um, and it's spreading. So how are you able to convince them? I mean, it's got to be more than just sitting down for dinner and, and, and dialogue, right? Well, what I do is this. I give them food for thought. I don't like to think of it as me convincing them. Okay. Okay? You know, a lot of times in the media, well, when you see my name, it will say, mm -hmm. black musician converts X number of Klansmen or something like that. Mm -hmm. No. I did not convert anybody, not even one. But yes, I am the impetus mm -hmm. for over 200 white supremacists, Klan and otherwise, leaving that ideology. So you're saying it's their personal choice? It's their personal choice after dialoguing with me. Mm. I give them food for thought, and, and I, I, I plant a seed, and I nourish that seed, and they come to the conclusion, you know what, I think I need to turn my life around. So what are they saying? I mean, what is, what's their reasoning behind being a member of this organization that's historically been so oppressive and, and violent uh, against African Americans? Well, you know, a Klansman or a Klanswoman is not stamped out of a standard cookie cutter. Mm. They come from all different walks of life, all educational backgrounds. So there are varying reasons as to why they join. Maybe it's because uh, my grandfather was in the Klan. Mm. My father was in the Klan, so I'm in the Klan. My kids are going to be in the Klan. You know, that kind of family tradition passed down. Other times, it's a socioeconomic thing. They see somebody who might look like you or I now, take, now having their jobs. And so it's, it's a threat because they don't have that job, and so they can't put food on their, on their family's table. So there's that. Uh, right. Or they move into an area that is, let's say, a sundown type town, where if you want to do business in there, you got to affiliate with the local network, right? You join the Chamber of Commerce, the local country club, and the local KKK. But there are stories out there. There are descendants mm -hmm. of African Americans in this country whose loved ones were murdered by That's Klansmen. Right. So then, how do you have such benevolence towards them, knowing that history? Listen. The history is not going to change, mm. all right? You know, you, you cannot forget that history. That did happen. But what we want to do is prevent it from happening again, happening again right. and from maintaining that ideology so it doesn't happen again. You know, you want to change perception and mm. give them that food to thought for thought so they can move away from that. Sure. I said at the beginning of our discussion that some would think you're crazy, but, but you know you're, what? you're doing God's Pe work, Pe really. Yeah, precisely. But you know what? People thought uh, Copernicus mm -hmm. uh, was crazy when he said that the uh, sun revolved around, I mean, when he said that the earth revolved around the sun, right. and everybody thought it was the other way around. All they right. thought Columbus was crazy when he said 
the earth is round. <laughs> we know that's not <laughs> the case, right. Uh, musician and activist Daryl Davis, thanks for joining me. Thank Interesting you. Interesting discussion for sure. All right.